Hi everyone, this is Heidi with Heidi and Franny's Garage. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video about will our cars be illegal? And I asked you all for comments and I got lots of good comments back. Really what I was talking about was that governments in the future are going to be trying to get us to switch from gas cars to some other form of fuel. In particular, I was referring to Great Britain in 2040 switching over and getting rid of them completely and going into electric or some other form. So I got a lot of comments. I got a lot of comments from you in England and um, I'd like to go over some of those comments about people's philosophies, whether it's realistic or not, and that's what this is about. So let's hear what some of you had to say. Scans peak zero zero. Let's be clear, electric cars are not zero emission vehicles. Very true. The emissions have simply been removed from the engine to the coal gas nuclear power plant. Clean renewable energy to charge EVs will only ever supply a fraction of the energy needs and even then batteries are far from non-polluting in their manufacture and disposal. No matter what, there's an impact in how we get our electricity. Ian Brown mentions that environmental experts have shown that restoring and driving an old classic car produces a far smaller carbon footprint than manufacturing, shipping, and then driving a brand new Prius or Prius, depending on where you come in the world, how you say that. You bring up a very good point. To just go ahead and build a brand new car is a huge environmental impact. And so it would make more sense to start taking what we've already manufactured, make it better if possible, and not have such a huge impact. I think that's a fabulous idea. Ronald Van... Rockle. I think electric cars are a nice step forward. However, I think folks are going to be surprised at the environmental impact it's going to have creating all those batteries for every driver on the road. The amount of mining, the other processes needed to create batteries will have to expand substantially. And what will that do to our environment? You know, um, this seems to be a repeating theme in the comments is the environmental impact from electric cars. You know, we have batteries and all sorts of things or making new cars instead of using the existing car. Depends on how it affects our infrastructure. Now, um, I'm a big proponent of solar panels. We have solar panels on our house. I would really like to see our infrastructure um, be more adoptive of solar and wind generation as well. So um, our BTOJ, I believe the future of electric cars will be the hydrogen fuel cell, in which case a gasoline station infrastructure will remain. Yes, the hydrogen has the advantage of being able to be used in internal combustion engines as well. So in the end, I believe things will not change much at all. I think you and Franny need to have a conversation about this because she really agrees with you on that. And I think that's very cool. So Clifton Frey here says, I've heard that the power grid is outdated. I'm not sure where you live, Clifton. I'm sure that we all have outdated power grids in certain parts of our country. We have problems with brownouts. What would happen if everyone came home after work in August with air conditioning running, plugged in their car, and how do power companies make the electricity? Do they use fossil fuels? I don't know what the future is for transportation, but I don't think it's all electric car. Yeah, probably not. I think electric is kind of the general focus of what we are doing right now, but maybe we need to really start investigating other forms of powering our vehicles. Maybe hydrogen or some of the other ones, suggestions that we've seen here. Friert de Reuter, I believe you're from the Netherlands. In Norway, the sale of gasoline or diesel powered cars will be banned by 2025. That's crazy. That's just like eight years from now and in, or seven years really because we're almost to 2018 at this point in the netherlands where i live it will be 2030 it's the sale of cars not the use of cars so gas gasoline and diesel power will be around for a while after that that being said there are cities in the netherlands where you have environmental zones 
meaning you can't enter certain city centers if you have a gas-powered car that's older than 1992. Yes, I believe that what you're saying is correct, that there's going to be more and more of these in the future that we're going to be looking at the impact of city centers. I know that London has, I think, penalties or fines. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, if you are during rush hour using a regular gas vehicle. I'm not sure how they enforce that, but it's something else that I think as we get more and more cars and more and more people on the planet, there's going to be more and more enforcement in that direction. I really like your the philosophy there. I, I really wish that like Denver, Colorado, which is our city close by, would do something like that. In fact, I wish that we wouldn't allow any vehicles, it doesn't matter if they're gas or electric or a hybrid, into our city centers at all. It's crazy, it's nuts, there's lots of people um, walking around there. And so if we figured that out for city centers, that would really be helpful. So he's got a lot, lot, lot of good points here. I'm not gonna go into all of them, it'll take up the rest of this video. So um, go ahead and, and get online and read some of his comments, they're really good. We have another comment here from Roto Ehu. Future of service stations may depend on if hydrogen fuel cells get traction then that infrastructure will be critical to supply H2. While battery tech is improving rapidly, you'll still have issues of how and how much electricity is generating. Not everyone lives in Southern California where solar may be a viable option. That's true, but we all have power grids, and those of us who live in places like Arizona, California, Colorado, who we do, ha we do have really good solar, um, I think our grids will all be tied into each other anyway to make up for those that are in clouds in the winter. But, um, I mean, wind energy is another one that we really haven't discussed, so that would be another way to, to supply the power grid. Richard Boudet, or Boudet, depending on whether or not with your French or not, I imagine a large increase in ride sharing, Uber, and public transportation, but gas stations and gas cars remain for collectors and enthusiasts. Maybe pure electric cars are 50 to 70 percent of the use. I would definitely agree that we're still going to have the collector cars no matter what. Some of you have brought up a good point, you know, about the the public transportation. I mean, those those cars pretty much have to run all the time and how if you're always having to charge your bus or larger vehicle for something that's really running all day long um, that's going to be a bit of an obstacle so most of our buses probably will still run on at least hybrid technology if it's not going to be a hundred percent gas so good point very good points 8e joseph there's no way electric vehicles will become the norm. Our infrastructure can't support it. And what fuel source will power the electric stations? Yeah, I mean, that's that same theme, right? How are we going to power it? Is it going to be with coal, which is a very big polluter? So, Steffi Dog 1, I live in the UK. I can't see it ever happening. How many batteries will lorries need? Uh, it just won't happen. Batteries aren't exactly environmentally friendly, are they? Yeah, I can't imagine like, um, you know, trucks, buses, all that stuff having these huge electric batteries. That just wouldn't make sense. So Tanner Watt, the vast majority of charging is done at home at night. I had a Volt and it would use public station maybe once a month if I happened to be shopping where there was one. Nighttime is low demand. So it's possible that the existing energy grid to handle if done properly, another perk it takes two seconds to plug in. If you plug in every night, you'll wake up with a fuel tank uh, every morning. Now, the Volt is an interesting technology. If you are running low on the electric power, you have this little tiny gas tank that will help you generate electric power. So it's not a true electric vehicle. It is somewhat of a hybrid. It's very similar to the um, BMW i3 as well. We haven't even brought in a lot of the elevation and um, going uphill issues for a lot of these and how quickly they can drain your uh, electric vehicle battery. So something else to think about. Peter J. U. Uren, um, he is I believe that you're from the UK, if I recall. I'll be 85 in 2040, so I may not 
even be driving then. But even so, living as I do in a regional town which is very poorly served by public transport, I would not like to have to rely on a battery-powered vehicle. Like an ambulance? Yeah, that would be a little scary. My car is diesel-powered, so hopefully biodiesel will be more readily available in the future than it is now. Good point. I hadn't thought about biodiesel, but these are all really great comments. And feel free to comment on this video now. Start the conversation among yourselves. And our next topic will be on the self-driving cars, because I'm really looking forward to talking to you guys about that. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't. And, you know, share this video. Let's get the conversation going with other people. It was really great to have you with me. And in the meantime, safe travels. Bye.